Hi, my name is Wendy. I'm 27 years old, based out of Richmond, Texas, and this is Financial Audit. What do you do in Richmond for a living? Um, I'm a brand marketing associate for a kitchenware and cutlery brand, and they're actually based out of Georgetown. So that's really yeah. like the Georgetown near here. Yeah, I yeah. Assume? So Georgetown. I come okay. into town. It's an Austin suburb. Very cool. Oh, so you come here a lot. Mm -hmm. Good. So, well, that explains. One of the restaurants I saw that is kind of near in there. All right. All right. So how much do you bring in this position? Um, sal or 65. 65 is your salary? Yes, yes. Cool. What hits your account on a monthly basis on average? Um, about 2K every two weeks. Every two weeks. That for makes that sense. job. So about 4,000. For that job? Are yes. we saying there's another job? Um, I, I've, I've always done freelance and also like a home health aid thing on the side. So an additional at least 1,000 to 1500 per month oh okay so an extra 1500 a month mm -hmm. yeah that's really cool so with that how much time are you putting into that on a monthly basis um that's usually on the weekend so it's it doesn't take anything from like i just have it set up in routine so that's just extra income but i do try to take on freelance clients if it makes sense if mm -hmm. it's worth it but um yeah right now i'm just trying to focus on my new job and it is a pretty new job and so um yeah i really like where i am yeah yeah okay so are you okay yes sorry okay no it's okay you're just your voice is shaking so i just want to make sure in general i do get shaky when i talk too so, oh okay yeah, yeah. well just as someone who is an anxious person and has uh, my own issues with that i just i want to make sure thank you um okay so why why are we in all this debt just off right. the bat we have the credit cards you know we're just all over the place why are you in a bunch of debt 27 years old making a decent income I'm making a decent income right now. And I think that is a common thing. And I do want to start off by saying I'm very aware of how well positioned I am. And I am, I was very set up by my immigrant parents for success. Your and so parents? My immigrant Grandparents? Parents, okay. My parents. I'm an only child and um, being from, I was born in China. And so I really? don't know how yeah, familiar you are with their first gen culture. But sure. um, I'm still very tied into my family. And like I moved right back with them um bought a new house after college and so we rent out my child at home and so you bought a new house or they bought a new house it was a collective effort i would say but financially obviously i didn't contribute nearly as much as they did well, well who's on who, who's on the loan we don't title? have a mortgage it was purchased in cash yes who's on the title on my parents okay so you have yeah. no ownership no no ownership so this is more like a handshake agreement like i have a little bit of ownership in this because you put money into it it's not really like black and white like that. It's, I guess it's just assumed like I'm an only child. Like afterwards, obviously the house would just no go risk to of me. your relationship souring. Uh, souring? Not really, just because we are codependent in a way. So like my parents don't speak English fully. They wouldn't even have been able to navigate any of that without me. And I know that there's this joke on TikTok that's like, oh, growing up, and I have to start making my own doctor's appointments and stuff. You know, like um, I can't tell my Parent, talk to her to call my mom but growing up that was always something I already did so I kind of had like arrested development where I grew up a little bit faster in the beginning compared to my peers but then I probably took mm -hmm. a bender here and there and sort of where was, was your college little, paid for yes well okay it was mostly paid for by scholarship and grants and then I took an additional okay. fifth year and so that's why I still have student loans oh okay but fifth year. where'd bad. you go UT UT mm -hmm. okay so big connections in Austin mm -hmm. what'd you study marketing that makes sense yes. for your job very good and you took out student loans for only the fifth year mm -hmm. so not student loans, so just student loans for the fifth year college was paid for set up for success mm -hmm. you put money towards this house that you're not on the title correct how much um i don't want to say mm, well that's okay well i can respect that but where my mind in question is when it comes to all this is like should we put money towards a house that we don't have any technical ownership into if we have a on a credit card debt that is accruing interest on a monthly basis? Well, I mean, basis? I, so I graduated in 2019. We got the house and pandemic hit. And yes, I didn't get a job right away, but I always had like my credit cards paid off up until I quit that first job. So I had living secured. I wasn't paying, like, I. the mindset was I don't love paying rent, right? And so if I'm going to have to have a housing expense, obviously I'm going to go in with my family and then maybe rent out whatever childhood home we have instead. And so that living-wise, that's been fine. Like, I don't have, 
as much rent expense or utilities or anything to worry about. So that is a huge safety net where honestly, sometimes I do fall back on and being like, oh, since like I don't have- Do you like living at home with the, the yes, parents though? It's fine for me because it's a pretty big house. I have my own floor. Like it's not- What like, happens if you, you know, start dating and get a spouse? I, gotta... I do think I travel enough to be out of the house a lot to where I don't think- I'm like bringing any of that home anyway. But either way, did it make sense for you to contribute to a house? Yes. Okay. Your living expenses are covered. But again, this is you contributing. It was almost like loaning out the money that you're already going to pay for rent in a way, in the way that I'm thinking about it. Because you don't have any equity in the home. Yes, it might be passed to you. I think we can consider a high likelihood that it will be passed to you there's always things and there's just a risk profile on that. Plus, even with the money that you're saving on rent, is that going to save the overall interest that is being accrued on a monthly and annual basis on the credit cards that we're not paying off that you could have paid off? Yes. I I just, I guess I would like to move on from this as fast as possible just because mm. I don't think this is a big part of, like I can't explain about it enough in detail for well, it what if i think it's a big part though okay so it was like a one-time chunk like sometimes it takes them. an outside perspective right. to understand what is a big impact overall in our decision making process and then making sure we don't do it again in the future the thing is it was like a one-time sort of payment thing where it was like i thought we were going to put down a down payment for the house right mm -hmm. so i gave them this little bit of being like i can help out with the down payment and then contribute to the monthly mortgage basically yeah but then they said they were like, surprise, we have enough cash. To Which is buy awesome. Out. Right. So there was no like monthly payment that I needed to even worry about anymore. And so whenever I was unemployed, I honestly wasn't giving them any money because like I couldn't. And so that was do great. Do you pay rent? I do now since I'm employed again. But mm. I, it did take me like a whole year to be able to find like a full-time job. And so that's when all the credit card debt racked up. I What's guess. your rent? Um, it would be around one thousand a month. Sometimes I give a little more if expenses come up. Like this month. Why is it a thousand dollars a month though? If you gifted money towards paying on the see, I'm just a little confused. Like I'm okay with paying rent for living with the fam, but you helped buy the house. You helped buy the house. Not as much as it was. Of course, not yeah. as much as them. They, I mean, you you gifted a part of a down payment. They bought yeah. the entire house. But even still, yes, there's like utilities and there's property taxes feel i don't know it's just a little interesting and so and that stuff i'm the one who has to take care of that right like they don't exactly. know how to pay utilities or property tax and stuff because well, i do have a hand in helping what about manage teaching? the house like that's why i'm tied into it we want them to be self-sufficient though at some point right i guess but it's like at this point they're close to retirement age well then we definitely but, want them to be self-sufficient and going into retirement is when you should be self-sufficient the most but they are super self-efficient financially it's just okay so then it's a matter of i guess navigating the american system it's I, not like they, right. i can expect but them instead to of do doing that. it for them what about helping and teaching and hand-holding along the way it's the, it's the it's the teach the fish versus it's, giving it's, a fish, right? It, you don't have immigrant parents, so I don't. No, think I don't. I don't know. Like, it's not just a language barrier. Like, sure. Like, yeah. Let's say tomorrow I could get them to speak the language fine, but even then, there's still like the navigation where, no, long term, I I it would be easier for me to just pay the bills for them rather than no no no, no sure to do I get that. it and you're right I don't have that but I think it's important in general when we're in any situation regardless to have a little bit of devil's advocate and to have a little bit of pushback on anything because it creates potential different opinions that we may have never thought about and potential different avenues that we may have never thought about and creates good conversations to open-minded people who might be able to pursue things in a slightly different way when we're already on one track so it's not about okay I know how to navigate a situation with immigrant parents who cannot speak the language. It's not me saying that at all. But there's also just, in general, wide-ranging philosophies that are um, that apply to every aspect in the world. And that's where I brought up the, okay, teach the fish versus giving a fish situation. I guess situation. our ultimate sort of difference is individualism versus... Cultural, yeah. Yeah, the cultural yeah. difference. So, like, to me... Whenever I'm ready to buy my first house, I can honestly say I can rely on my parents to help me out with that if I need help. And that's because we have that two-way sort of like mm -hmm. relationship even till this day. Which is great. But when you go and buy your own house and you don't live with them, how are they going to be able to be self-sufficient if you're the one who's taking care of everything right now? The same way I always have. I do it from so you're gonna not take... next to them. Yeah. I Whenever I went off to college, like, yeah, I wasn't living with them for five years, but I yeah. still, you know, always had to have kind of roots back home and i think that is just an inevitable 
like unchanging thing for first generation, especially girls too, that this is just our responsibility and duty mm-hmm. to kind of do they expect it? Not it's not expecting type of thing, but it's like this is what I do. Like I my parents take care of me and I take care of them. How are they taking care of you? By being a combined household and because of them I don't have to worry about rent up until now. I just started my job in yes. late July. That was that was, that was a, a, a very nice thing. Of course you gifted some towards the down payment. So I think it was more like we like loaned that money that's been then received through you not paying rent in a way. Mathematically it may have not equated zero in the end, but Right. You and, know and that's what I'm saying that I get your point and how you always challenge people and you always have kind Which is of good. I want to be side. challenged as well. Yeah, but I, I always come into this almost wary of being like, I don't want to have to argue about with you on this. Well, this isn't yeah, this isn't an argument. It's a conversation. It's not a transactional thing to me either. You know, no, so there's so I'm many other that. factors that go on just to financial implications. That I'm yeah. like, all right, yes, this might be harder to understand, but I don't think we can unpack all of it within this one conversation. Nothing can be unpacked within one conversation, but it's opening different perspectives is often an important thing to do, whether you're opening my perspective or I'm opening yours. That's a, that's a good thing. And having an openness conversation, even when one, you know, is not in the other shoe doesn't mean that a conversation shouldn't be had just like, you know, saying, Oh, you can't speak on, you know, parenting. You can't speak on being a first generation immigrant. You can't speak on this means that no one should be able to have an opinion on student loans. If they've never had a student loan, no one should have an opinion on anything that they've never personally impacted themselves. Doesn't mean that there's not wide ranging philosophies all across the world that, can't help apply to specific situations. And I'm not opposed to what you're saying, but I am trying to understand the situation you're in, especially as we try to understand your finances because everything can be intertwined. Because when we first talked about this uh, housing situation, we talked about you gifting some money towards down payment. Now I'm sitting here looking at a bunch of debt and I'm like, oh man, if you had that money, obviously uh, maybe we could have paid towards this, but then, but then... Mm -hmm. Well, we would have been in much worse. Well, again, day. again, that's why that's why I said. And then we had the conversation, which was an important conversation because you added context around. Okay, but then I would have had to pay rent, so the money wouldn't have been there in the first place because it would have gone towards credit cards. Yeah. So it's not an argument; it's an open, honest conversation, understanding you know the different perspectives, and then trying to open some minds with different perspectives as well. Um, like statistics around uh, first generation uh, parents. Yeah, I think we all know a lot of the expectations and how it sets up in the United States. States in terms of the uh, child of the first gen- uh, child of the parents, you know, I don't know any statistics around. Okay, on average, how many of them take care of, especially if they're a woman, like you said, take care of uh, property taxes and all that stuff with their parents? I don't know, so I can't say. Okay, well, maybe you're an outlier here, or maybe you're part of the norm because I don't have that information at my fingertips. But it is interesting, especially. I know the American economic culture, and that is the culture that you are a part of now, regardless of the culture that you came from. This is the one that you're in, and that's where I try to help people navigate is through our economic culture. If you ever want to grow, and you're not there now, but if you ever want to grow beyond just that household, all my fear is if you are setting someone up in a way where everything that they might need to know is already being taken care of, is that an overall benefit to them in the future? If something changes, if all I'm taking in account is some potential risk of life changing and life always changes, life always changes. That's all. I want to take a brief moment to thank today's episode sponsor, Vora. Vora is an investing platform that introduces a new take on how to grow and save your money. It's the first ever automated robo advisor that gives you rewards every time you invest or save. For every dollar you invest, Vora will give you an additional 1% match. That's like getting cash back for your deposit. There are no caps or limits on how much you can invest and how much that gets matched. And that's not all. Vora makes investing more fun with monthly sweepstakes. Each monthly deposit rewards you with an entry to join and win $1,000. And if you win, your winnings will go directly into your Vora account. And you don't watch the stock market? 
Vora takes care of that for you. The app makes investing simple, automating your investments in a risk adverse portfolio. Between the rewards and automated investments, you can sit back and take advantage of the power of compound interest. If you've been wanting to get started with investing, but have been hesitant to take that first step, Vora makes it so easy to start putting your money to work. And by using my promo code HAMMER23, depositing $25 or more, you will get an additional $10 bonus right away. Once signed up, you can get an additional $25 for every friend you refer using your unique referral code. So use code HAMMER23 and get a $10 bonus when you sign up and deposit $25 by using my link in the description below. Okay, so there that was a lot there, but I do think previously you've had guests also with similar situations that have ties with their parents still, mm-hmm. and you kind of have presented the same sort of like counterpoint, I guess. Sure. And I guess I'm trying to present that sort of I know you can't see it the statistics or whatever how common it is but I'm telling you it is common like if you go you on have social the stats media or are we just taking you know ear ear and mouth on social media you know you've talked about girl math boy math how that's like a new thing I like, haven't yeah, but it's been a TikTok you know meme, like you that know. sort of like topic so there's this new niche called immigrant girl math mm. or immigrant daughter math so it is a prevalent enough niche sure. for it to have a name like that so mm-hmm. so i'm not going to have any hard numbers backed up to it but i'm which is fine yeah but i'm telling you at face value it is this is really common and mm-hmm. it is how it is all the time and i do know exactly what you mean though yeah that because <clears throat> they were brought up in such a different system so their way is really saving heavy so my parents have never yeah. made more than 50k combined growing up and wow. yet they were able to save right for a house That's with cash awesome. and so yeah. They're used to that sort of discipline and that just saving hard mindset, but they're not super savvy with, like you said, navigating debt Mm -hmm. or navigating interest or credit or, you know, (laughs) leveraging these different financial tools. And so I am super aware of how we came to the U.S. to pursue the American dream, but an inevitable inevitable part of that was almost being a consumer. Like to be yes. <laughs> to live the American dream is to be the ultimate consumer. So Swipe I do card. admit that I've fallen a lot, as you can see, into the trappings of that. But then also, as soon as I've been able to get my full time job, I thought I was gonna be able to aggressively pay off debt. And obviously, mm. it's not as never as easy as you think. Exactly. And your discipline is never as good as you would assume it would be either. So Which that's is also kind of what I'm trying to yeah, say. So I'm here to be prepared to get yelled at yeah. by you because I know there are a lot of things that I could be doing better. But also to explain that there are some things that you might not understand, but it kind of just makes sense for me. Sure. Still, yeah. Well, again, I'm not opposed to what you said. I'm not opposed to it. There's not anything inherently wrong with the way you're doing it. Um, But uh, trying to at least understand or at least help you understand the risks is all within our culture that you are a part of the economic culture now. Bringing some internal household cultures from the previous uh, place you've come from, China, that's awesome. We can do that in the household. Doesn't mean you're not a part of the economic culture of America. So just understanding the risk around that and making sure we're paired prepared for that because we can't just say because of where we came from that's how the economic culture is going to be here now that's not how it works right well it's not like i'm but it's not like i mean so what's the alternative i move out and start having like an extra rent expense too so i don't really know i've never i I never i don't really know what oh no i did not suggest that for at all better substitute would be No, no 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 it's not that it's just do you want to do this forever how about that? Do you want to do this forever? Do you want to take care of all their bills without them having learned anything forever? I'm not. I'm taking care of them by doing what I can, like, you know, mm-hmm. just helping them work out the system. It's still their money that they're paying yes, bills Yes, 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 yes. Like, but, but, but you're the one <clears throat> taking the actions, right? Paying right. the property taxes. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to do that forever? I mean, yeah, I'm fine with doing that, yes. Do you want to do it forever? It doesn't matter what I want. Whoa, it's whoa, not whoa. like my parents hey, wanted to raise on this. their kids either. No, 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 no. Either. Follow like me. About... Oh, okay, one okay. second. They, the, first of all, they take on the responsibility if they have the kid, whether or not they want to. You're not taking on a responsibility by being born. Flat out. But, okay, so I'm asking if you want to. And just follow me on this ride for a second. Do you want to do yes, this forever? I do want to because okay. I want to make sure my parents are well taken care of. There you go. If you want to, then it's totally fine. Okay. It's totally fine. If that ever changes, I hope that they're not all of a sudden forcefully left behind because they were never prepared to learn how to do that stuff on their own. And that's the only risk that I'm a little nervous of. 
Does that make sense? So that's all. Again, I have no issue with you doing this. I'm just more of, I like to teach people versus do things for people. Instead of giving the, someone the fish, I like to teach them how to fish. I think it's more productive for everyone's life. So that's really it. But totally good with you doing what you want to do. There's nothing inherently against that. But um, having a different opinion is never a bad thing. With the, so why did you go into the debt in the first place, though? Um, honestly, and you're going to hate this, when I quit my job, um, I had 10 to 15K saved up. Like oh, wow. re- as emergency Why'd you quit savings. your job? It was a tough work environment. It was basically one of those things where the boss felt like a Bravo reality TV show. Like he was the villain, but oh, also geez. like super, you know, hectic and a lot going on. So I'm grateful for the experience and I'm really glad I left there kind of with that resume and showing everything I was able to do. And then I did do that year of freelance. And so because of my mental state at the time, I kind mm. of did want to just maximize like living basically oh let me enjoy life because i suffered for so long yeah. at that job and i know i so That's i hard one. i spent like 10k going to europe Ooh. yeah for five weeks and i know that it's not going to make me look good and people are going to like have opinions about this but i honestly do not regret that for a second well it right. does show <laughs> like it does it gave me like a reason to want to live again to okay. enjoy life to like sure. see what else was out there and like i don't know like it, it really did kind of brighten up the whole like world for a second and then everything um <clears throat> when i came back kind of just didn't catch up as quickly as i wanted it to yeah and so because not, of that year i'm not opposed to that have been <clears throat> being a thing that you know helps you know you want to continue on the earth i'm not opposed to that in general uh what I would want to think about are potential alternatives that just don't put us in a bad spot that could perpetuate you needing to get in a situation again that you don't like in order to pay off the debts that you then owe. So it's like potential alternatives. Yes, that worked. Maybe something else would have worked as well. I'm not upset that that worked. I'm not upset that that worked. Uh, I don't yell at people for what they did a few years ago because we learned from it. I yell what you're doing now. So if you're going to Europe right now, I'd be like, right. yo, you doing psh, psh, psh. but you also said that you don't regret it at all now it's because of what happened in terms of you being like okay cool i'm excited so you don't regret like the feeling behind it do you regret the financial decision behind it though because that's kind of important because if we don't learn from it then who's to say you won't do that a year from now if your next job is also very difficult i think finance i knowing what i know now i definitely if i only had that much saved up i wouldn't make the same choice again but okay, i am good, okay with my good decision post decision because i'm like money can always be made back as long as i paid that debt off and then just never ever do that again money can always be made back i am okay with that experience having that experience what can't be made up is the time of compound interest that was lost and i want you to be able to retire and that is the big part of where i know like i not like i beat myself up but i'm like i do know that it's the biggest regret is i didn't start investing right out of college and i honestly wasn't in the position to be able to start until now and so that is well a big part i mean of that ten thousand dollars could have right, right gone right. towards it so not exactly but how long have you guys been here by the way um since 2004 when i was eight very cool very cool do you like being here yeah of course okay cool. <clears throat> so let's go through your debt balances what would you give mm-hmm. yourself a score zero to ten your um, financial score the wendy financial score maybe one hopefully two <laughs> okay <laughs> I would have loved to use that $10,000 to have that score be about a four today. But alas, but we're alive here we are anyway. Well. We're alive anyway. Again, I think we could have potentially found different alternatives. I don't, I'm not upset that you did what was necessary to you. I just wish maybe we spent more time to right. consider potential alternatives. Um, Like I go to therapy and it is lovely. $1,118 of purchases on a card that we can't pay off. Yep. It doesn't make any sense. Why the f*** are we possibly doing that? I think, okay, so <clears throat> I also have, it's not a defense, but I do know why it happens. A lot of Americans, I think, use credit cards as safety nets, right? Like, yes. they just obviously would rather <clears throat> take on that debt than go without, or to know that they don't have enough to pay for something. So in my mind, yes, it felt more safe Well, you safe said two different secure. things there. So I, I want to I right. make clear what you say. Safety net. Okay, sure. Mm-hmm. So we use this because an emergency pops up and we don't have an emergency fund because emergency, not having an emergency fund is an emergency. Okay, that's different. But then you also said 
to spend money we don't have. You I forgot the exact word you said, but it was essentially uh, consumerism. Mm -hmm. Those are two different things. Safety net right. for something we need to do, medical bill, uh, rent, utility, okay, Mickey D's. Those are two different things. They're two different things, but I think Americans' like standard of living, we're so used to enjoying whatever um, impulse that we kind of have sometimes that it's oh, harder yes. to obviously like hold off on those impulses. But uh, also there were some random expenses like work expenses that I would just want to put on a card to make sure I could pay for it before it's reimbursed and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But yeah, like I said, it just felt safer to just put expenses in general on a car just to make sure they could be covered and then worry about paying it back later. I mean, yes, okay. that's just the definition of credit cards. Well, even though we but, know that mathematically yeah. that's not necessarily safer and it's actually putting you further in a hole. Right. So Correct. I guess now it's just a matter of separating out the actual dire crucial expenses mm -hmm. and making sure I could absolutely pay for those and then just cutting out the rest that's like, oh, I can cover it later. Type Have you ever had a budget? Um, I have had kind of like an approximate budget where I'll be like every time or whenever I started getting paid, I would just try to, I don't know if you can tell, I tried to aggressively pay off the um, cards with whatever income I was coming in, but then that wasn't fast enough. And so now I'm on more of a budget recently, but not really. So this is where, yeah, again, this wasn't a fallback because we had a necessity pop up. We have Spotify, we have Sweet Paris, which I've started falling in love with Sweet Paris, by the way. I've been eating those waffles way too many times. Yikes. Fast park reservations. We don't need to be doing that. TJ. I was out of town. I had to park at the airport. Five bucks. Uh, I, guess, I guess that is more price effective than Uber. In, so I'll give yeah. you that. TJ Maxx. So there was actually a lot of clothing shopping, but not necessarily at expensive places. Uh, the TJ Maxx was whenever my dad was going back to China. I had to get expensive skincare for family. Expensive skincare for Estee family? Lauder for family because it's like a it's like good to bring nice gifts back home and stuff so i just wanted to make sure i got something nice for my cousin but that was just the one thing that was oh crazy. but i'm also like again there is the culture of difference but then i'm like because you're part of this economic culture now congratulations you're here i'm gonna gift myself getting out of debt <laughs> so that i can give you mr cousin many more tj maxx things in the future because i have money working instead of going further in the hole making it harder for me to be there in the future yeah, and i think knowing how bad it was i wouldn't have done it again but you know my dad doesn't go back to china for every 10 years sure or so, so it's like you're also a makeup queen alta glamedic something deodorant 32 dollars taquitos and netflix and lavender ring 129 dollars lavender ring that's underwear i know it's i'm that was not i'm not just fine those, those dude if the frivolous. underwear have holes get yourself some underwear <laughs> but if they don't like um okay what I I don't have any justifications for that. No, but you don't. I will say I'm generally try. try to because I don't ever like I do have some sort of chokehold from my Asian parents, like the frugality and sort of the <laughs> saving this money is not aspect. Frugal. Right. So I'll try to like tell myself, oh, since I don't Uber Eats ever, um, since mm. I you know try to save money by never Ubering and like because I am so. So good since I'm at, not a dumb in one way, I can right. be a dumb. So like, way. because I'm like, oh, I get my bang. Like, it's that girl math, I guess. It's like, because girl I get math. my bang out of my buck. Stop girl ways, math. Let's budget math. I like, yeah, I then go spending on other things. Girl math, boy math. Yeah. Let's like actual math math. I prefer math math. This card, this card was actually paid off, but there was interest that was still accrued. So like that accrued before you paid it off within the last statement. And then still $43 of purchases. So where did we do? We had some an, uh, an Apple bill. Maybe it was an Apple Pay of some kind, and Hulu and Klarna. So financing, and then paying it off via credit card. So we're just pushing back the actual payment. Right. So that for that mindset, and I'm sure I also shouldn't use Klarna anymore. But for that, I was like, oh, because I'm accruing interest on existing credit card debt, at least while I'm trying to pay that off, Klarna won't add on any more yeah, interest. But why just, why even do it? Because it's probably not a necessary purchase going through your uh, purchases you're right. or not. Some of them, probably everything except one was like a So you're clearly falling purchase. into American consumerism. Right. And oh, and I will say another aspect was um, I do have like 1,500 to 3,000 coming in because I've started doing reselling. I used to resell brands a lot. Mm -hmm. So I kind of got know the groove of that. Um, 
And so I am trying to make back cash, basically. Okay. Post consumerism yeah. for it. Oh, but. are you post consumerism? Because this was just like now. Right. Yeah, it's it's a hard chokehold to get out of. And I will say, do you think you do you think you have some cope? We we mentioned mm. some mental health things, and that's why you did European vacation. And great, I'm gl- uh, you're here and alive, and I would take that any and every day over the ten thousand dollars. So still, that I consider that a win. Uh, do you think mental health surrounding maybe hard days at work lead to our overspending on different things we don't need? No, but I do think it comes from like a a, a sort of routine of frugality growing up because my parents were so good at saving and being like oh we can live without we can live without as soon as i had any access to my own credit i was like oh now i can just get it and so yes i am conscious of having to that's why i don't like any aspect of shelterism because the one moment people escape that shelter they're just like exposed to reality and then they just fall full-fledged into different things whatever they were sheltered from now being in a frugal household that's not necessarily being sheltered but maybe there wasn't a lot of discipline taught around the why i'm not sure maybe it was just it was and there wasn't whys and then we're just like no okay. no no now my parents go crazy no this is not on them at all they definitely did oh, i'm not saying that no no no, 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 no. no. and i'm no, not trying no. to be like oh you know like because they were cheap I, this is completely on me because i know my mom did exactly what she had to do and she still made sure I never went with that. No, they so were like, they yeah. were doing it right. No, don't yeah, get yeah. me wrong. Yeah, yeah. But because of that, if there wasn't a lot of teaching as the why with it, which, you know, isn't there? No, no. Fault. And I'm saying this well, part okay, too. She mind. also was pretty good at telling me, like, oh, because you know we're able to budget, she would be able to send me on bigger expense trips for school, okay. even though okay. otherwise I wouldn't. So I do see, like, I very virtually saw the benefits of saving growing up too. It's just still that impulse of mm-hmm. wanting. Yeah. Gotcha. On Apple, we owe $4,338.68. $258 minimum monthly payment is pretty, intense only minimum monthly payments would take 17 years to pay off and you'd pay in total of eleven thousand five hundred ten dollars by the way and we're going to like uh, it's always it's, they always miss words in this apple thing i don't know why but mcdonald's some ebay's cider burger factory i think and an apple bill of some kind and an he veg yeah bullshit, i guess and then we also have things financed so maybe a iPad, maybe a watch or a phone or a computer. Phone and computer. Phone and computer. Not necessarily opposed to that if done correctly with 0%, but in your situation where right. we're clearly not disciplined with that and you're not a credit card person, objectively, we're probably not taking advantage of things like this. It, it was a necessity at the time. I didn't have to cash. And I shouldn't have spent any more on that Apple Card, definitely. Not having an emergency funds an yeah, emergency. But... You're losing $70 a month in interest on this one so far. You lost, what, like $100 this year so far on the other one, or like a few hundred bucks, and then $500 on the first one this year so far. So we're probably over $1,000 in interest lost this year so far. Oh, this one hurts. Okay, so um, now we have a Sapphire card. So we're just opening them all. $2,884.94 is owed on this lovely guy with a deathly $390 minimum monthly payment and 97 cents. Kill me now. $62 of interest and $23 of fees. You made a big payment, but we purchased 1794 Again, I understand where you've come from. I understand what you've said about the consumerism and the safety net of credit cards. Laying that out all, all laying that all out, we get it. We need to stop it. It's as simple as that. We need to stop it. You're just you're putting yourself in a worse and worse situation. And you could have paid off this card in an additional month. But we're just we put money on it. And now fees and interest. I mean, I had to book like three hundred dollars worth of trips, like you know, Airbnb accommodations and stuff for work too. Huh? Like, oh, this is all work? Yeah, no, not all, but like when I Whenever you do see randomly, it goes up to, like into the thousands. It's because I randomly had to book something for travel. Or okay, how much is this all like? Because a lot of that is oh, in no, Spanish. I can't is, speak no, Spanish. Sorry. This Mexican travel was just a tri- birthday trip. That was different. Yeah, that was a friend trip. So f- off. <laughs> I'm sorry. But no, sorry. What I a missed, what a what a what a fib. <laughs> Come on. There's lines and lines and lines of death. Bull. Stupid. Bull. Death. 
Lovely. Then we go to things I can actually at least understand a little more. And tacos and tacos and Airbnb and Sephora and Jack in the Box and Buffalina. And actually Taquito. El Taquito, number one. It's kind of funny. Smash Burger, Jersey Mike's, Twinkie Tea Shop, Klarna, Klarna, and we're paying for our financing, already putting on a card that we can't even pay off in interest of being accrued, lost a thousand dollars in interest is just so far on this card, lovely, Valentina's, Birdie's, and Eichengerger, and then one that very much excited me, Buda Burger, what do you think of the Bud? Um, I That's liked it, but I tracked it down for a very specific reason, Why? so, um, I saw that you were interested in franchising, and one blip that wasn't blipped out mentioned Buddha. Yeah, I mean, that's it's why fine. I was like Buddha Burger, so that's why I tried it. It was Buddha Burger. Yeah, yeah, it was close to my work too. So, what do you think? What'd you get? I got the mush, the one with the melty cheese in it, oh, the mushroom yes. bomb thing. It was good. I I yeah. think um, I need to go back. I didn't get to eat it fresh. Oh so, well, yeah. you gotta. Yeah. The moment beef is off the grill, it's a ticking time bomb yeah, until yeah. it's not good anymore. The California. Get the single or double California. Oh, okay. That California. is the play. Now that I'm not franchising them anymore, I don't care. Go support them. They're good. They're delicious. Everything is cooked and clarified butter. And it's the worst food for you possible. And it's absolutely amazingly delicious. And it gives me the booteria every time I have it. The booteria. Yeah. It, it's a rough time. But it's good while it's going in. And then plan fee, plan fee, plan fee. It's like we're financing things. We have some finance charges through Kiwi, Airbnb, Airbnb or something. I... And again, a thousand dollars of interest loss this year so far. Essentially, one hundred eighteen dollars stolen from you this month in interest. And again, okay, maybe Airbnb is worth deductible, but it's just f- you spending, f- spending on different trips. Of the spending we've looked at, there's been barely any necessities, and you're just spending thousands of dollars. Yeah, and I think that's why I did come in here getting ready to get yelled at because even without all those necessities, I still haven't been able to repay as much as I have. Oh, but I do want to bring up, right before I started my new job, I did get scammed like $1,000. Not almost scammed. So I almost got almost. scammed, um, and I had $1,000 of eBay credit stuck in there. Oh. So that's why um, it delayed me a little bit. But <sighs> Student loans. I, I, yeah, I can definitely understand that. That sucks. It's not that bad, I feel like. It could have been worse. It could have been worse, but no one likes to get scammed. Yeah, it sucks. So just for an extra year, we had to borrow $11,666. Well, that's the current balance. We start, we started making payments, and we have $121 because we are in repayment time. And I asked for those to be held off for a few months, too. Six more months. Why? Just so I can catch up on other debts first, I guess. Uh, yeah, but... But if I'm not mistaken, when you do that little defer, that extra defer, because I actually did that once too when I didn't understand debt and it was bad and it was stupid of me because, yeah, we're getting daily interest accruing. You're still having interest accrued throughout that entire process. So it's still better to keep making payments to get it down. I would, yeah, because you're at least you're at least starting to make progress. But now no progress is being made, but we're not in the point where interest isn't being accrued. Interest is accruing now. Okay. And this is $121. Uh, going out to eat was $324. So double of what you could have been paying towards it. So like you could have made this payment. You, what, you, what you said was I'm going to defer this payment so I can go f- around and eat out. That's essentially what you said, mathematically speaking, in your bills. So I'm not, so I'm not thrilled at uh, that. And uh, now the interest rates aren't crazy. When we start paying these, and we can talk about minimum monthly payments, so they're paid off potentially. The highest one's five percent, and the rest are a little below that. It's really not crazy. This scared me, and again, this kind of correlates with the spending you did not need to be spending. Should we be spending the money that we did not need to be spending if we have ninety six dollars and fifty five cents in our checking account? Oh. That's scary. Why are you prioritizing those items? Buda Burger, love it. Why are we prioritizing Buda Burger over having money in our checking account? I mean, I guess I just didn't realize how disciplined I had to be to start making a dent. Like in my mind, I was like, oh, I have a full-time job now. As long as I start 
paying as much as I can, like it'll go away eventually. But then obviously finding your channel, having to deep dive and being uncomfortable, like facing the numbers and yes. being like, okay, just, and that justification of being like, oh, now that I'm fully employed, I can actually enjoy the occasional thing. But it's like, no, I need to actually be doubled as disciplined to kind of make back and repay what I was doing before. Whereas, um, yeah, I just was kind the of change starts okay now or dude you're headed down a dark path that you've already been headed down and it's only going to get worse and you're not going to be able to retire because there's we're going to get the retirement after the checking account and it's like nothing nothing and you're going to be headed into your second decade of work and nothing so some fee of five dollars i don't know this keeps popping up fee fee five dollar five dollar that's a withdrawal plus a fee yeah all that mexico stuff was just a friend's birthday oh. trip yeah your friend okay normally i'd say fuck your friend because in my mind that's just me saying you know what let's prioritize just you getting out of debt right now but so many people take that so literally that's just in my language of being cheeky um so fuck your friend come on happy birthday pay off your debt and then catch up on retirement have a fully funded emergency fund then reward them with a lovely big birthday gift hey sorry i didn't make it that one year so here it is or maybe your other friends come together when my when so we have a massive income gap in the, our seven group of core friends that i have here um very wide ranging people of different incomes sometimes like uh some of us who are on the more blessed scale of that income scale want to go do something that someone who's on the lowest end making like 14 bucks an hour can't do we don't say okay we're not gonna do it or we don't say okay don't 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 come and not do it i'm like i want to experience this with you because you're my friend i, I love you uh I, i'm paying for you maybe your friends would have come together and helped if you explained your situation maybe not maybe you didn't want to put yourself in that uh, uncomfortable situation of admitting where you were, you know, because in our culture, and I don't know about that culture uh, that you come from as well, but we're not very open about our finances here, which is bad. Yeah, and I will say I'm stuck in between two worlds. Like here, I am very much with American friends and Americanized yeah. people. So, yeah. um, right, I didn't want to obviously tell them I was going into debt to take that birthday trip. I obviously mm. had FOMO and was like, Mexico is relatively affordable. I can squeeze this one reckless decision in. So yeah, that was not. Um, <sighs> Helping for sure. What's West Chase? West Chase? Well, 100 bucks you spent. West Chase, Houston. Probably just ATM. Oh, wait. It was an ATM withdrawal. Yeah. ATM. 100 bucks. Who knows where that went? Sending out some cash app. And then the rest were mostly just paying towards bills. And yeah, in our uh, life insurance. So yeah. is this. Random and weird, huh? For someone my age with no kids. Uh, who's insuring you? So my mom signed us both up, but now I'm the insured one, so she, I've started having to pay it. So she's the beneficiary? Yeah, I said, yeah, the beneficiaries, but, um, they're my parents for now. Okay. Um. And it is whole life insurance, and of course, is. post some sort of literacy of me just trying to find out about life insurance in general, but, you know, the common thing is like, do term if you have to, if you have dependents to cover, but generally people don't love whole life insurance. And so I've always felt like maybe we shouldn't have this, but <laughs> then maybe it doesn't hurt to keep. And then I know Dave is very anti. It. I mean, yeah. just with the cash in, cash out, in terms of an investment vehicle, uh, sometimes, you know, it doesn't have the return that mm -hmm. I'd like you to have. Um, interesting uh, I, I did a massive, massive deep dive and actually got on the phone with lots of uh, certified financial advisors who talk of life insurance. And uh, I, I spent hours and hours uh, mm -hmm. trying to become more informed on this one because I knew it would come up at some point. There's actually at a certain income and wealth threshold, there right. are certain things that actually that can be taken advantage of in whole life for the vast, vast, vast 99 percent of people. That's no, what I've heard. I would too. just go term. Uh, I don't really understand it anyway. Uh, so I guess. Uh, you know, yeah. parents would get $125,000 if you unfortunately pass away. Uh, it's taking out insurance plan on your kids. And are you paying for it or are they? Um, They've been paying for it my whole life, but now I, okay. I'll start paying oh. for it. Yeah. Well, it's like, yeah. Wait, I thought I saw insurance in here. Did I not? My Or not insurance, uh, retirement. I have Did a four hundred one k, but it was how like, much is in that? It's only like a hundred from like. You know, okay, so that scares the f out of me. That's that's terrifying. 
So we did have. Oh, and my my employer does match now, but the benefits don't start for a few months. So only <laughs> in terms of money that actually went to, towards debt, it was probably like about 3%. Where again, it was like 20% was like Mexico. Are you sure? Okay. Oh, other, th- other, other than, other than, so, sorry, debt besides your car payment. Oh, so no the thing payment. is, I actually started with 15K of debt in July and I paid it off to 10K now. Okay. So I don't That's know how really accurate good. that mm. all the transactions reflect that, I guess. One second. But, um. So debt payments, we had about 1867 Uh Rent was like 1000 at transportation costs, we got about three oh eight that we were able to find. But then again, yeah, your shopping, which is like eBay and cider and the deodorant and the lavender ring, that was six 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 hundred fifty six dollars. Just an additional six hundred fifty six dollars that could have gone towards paying down our debt a little more. And then subscriptions, you know, Adobe. I feel like you might use that for your side business. Yeah, and I'm trying to get. That's okay. Now I have it through work, so I'm trying to cancel it oh, if possible. Oh, that's smart. But then but also they, Spotify, Netflix, Hulu. We don't need yeah. to be having those right now. We don't. Or we at least we, we can listen to ads on Spotify. It sucks. I get it, but you have debt. And some taquitos and Ulta and Venmo out money, cash app out money, Glamatic. It's an initial hundred eighty two dollars. Then a thousand twenty six dollars went to like Mexico stuff. That could have gone towards debt. So we're just not doing this in the right. You're just. The thing that's a little upsetting to me is with your spending, what you're spending now and potential justifications is I think we could have been out of debt. We're very close. If every month previous was not something similar to that. And the, the oddities that happen in one month will be replaced by an oddity in a different month. That's what we see. So rent, we have $1,000, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, you do not have a car payment. Mm -mm. Car insurance is? One oh something per year, and that's paid off for the year. 100 something bucks a year? No, 1,000 something for the year. And then I I, I put the expenses, I think. Yeah, about 87 bucks a month is what it comes (coughs) out to. That's what we have. $102 of gas? Uh, Maybe per month, maybe more. But my work usually reimburses. Most Ooh, what do they? So that comes into the pay. Now, does that come into the four thousand dollars that I had set aside? No. Is that additional? Additional. Oh, so we'll wipe off gas. Yeah. And the Airbnbs usually are reimbursed by work too. Outside of the Mexico. Now, how does groceries work at home? How how are we doing this? So we have gardens. We have like more than enough I groceries. Love that. Yeah. Um, oh. So technically, I shouldn't be. Wait, you guys out. don't shop at all? Well, no, we shop minimally, but it's like we have so much produce What's, in yeah, general. But, okay, but how does it work? <clears throat> like, do you contribute? Do they contribute? Do we shop separate? Do we eat together? How is groceries done? So my parents, well, my mom will usually grocery shop, but then I also buy stuff for the house. So it's Are the, whoever that you it. need to. I don't have to, but I, whenever I want to make the mistake or something. I'll but if I it. if I give you like hundred fifty bucks, I can is that yeah. fine. Yeah, I can okay. work with that. Uh, now, $1,000 for rent. Do you also pay into utilities and internet and stuff like that? That covers it all. Okay, Andrew. good. And sometimes if we have, like, water heater broken, I'll pitch in more and stuff. To- uh, makeup and toilet paper, I'm giving, um, because I know we're going to have room, I'm going to give you $100. And I'm actually going to give you uh, $30 of subscriptions. Oh, thank you. What else do you have to take care of on a monthly basis? We talked about potential depression, and you took a $10,000 trip to help deal with that. Have we thought about with the health insurance you have seeking mental health help? Yeah, so I did write in, or I wanted to plan maybe um, for gym and mental health sort of budget. Gym 30? Or what gym are you looking at? I was looking at Class Pass, and that was a little bit more expensive, like 80 bucks a month, I think. Okay, and uh, what would your copay be and therapist? I haven't been able to find that out yet. Um, hopefully not that bad. I'm going to put 200 Okay. Could be more, could be less. Uh, anything else that you have to take care of on a monthly basis that we have not included in this, besides your debt payments, which I will add up now? Um, can I check my phone real quick? Oh, sure. Yeah. Debt, by the way. I might have to take away the subscriptions. We'll see. Okay. 850 
81. Not monthly obligations, but I do know something's wrong with my car coming up that I kind of want to take. It might be like 750 to fix. Okay. So at that point, whatever's going towards that for that month might have to go towards that. Okay. But, but that that's could it? be a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see. Let's see how much wiggle room we have. Let's see how much wiggle room we have and we can come back to that point. Because that's a fair point. Fair point. I mean, in an overall budget, we eventually do want to set potential money aside for car maintenance. So, yeah, you should be able to cover that easily uh, within a budget if you're aggressively budgeting on a monthly basis. So you bring in $5,500 a month total. Are you setting any money aside at that 1500 When you get it, I'd set 30% aside. The extra money? Yeah. That's post-tax already. That's post you put setting money aside. No, the extra like, fifteen hundred. No, no, no. The extra fifteen hundred that you bring in from self employment stuff. That's oh no, it's still W two. It's oh, it is. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, or at least one oh nine nine, but it's post tax. Like I get the wait, wait, um, wait. I ten ninety nine. Ten ninety nine. Or hold on, I'm trying to remember because I had worked with different agencies. Wait, what's the job again? Different home health aid. Oh, so yeah, you could be W two, but you might yeah. be contract. I would just figure that out if it is yeah. if it is contract, and I'm just gonna bake it in just to be extra conservative. I want you to set thirty percent aside, which okay. would be four hundred fifty bucks a month. So we're gonna for that one though. I'm pretty sure it's post tax though, because I get a you pay are stub. you're confident. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure I get a pay stub that tells me why I get the end amount. Oh, sick. Okay, yeah. so fifteen hundred. Okay, so. Fifty five hundred on a monthly basis, minus that by two thousand seven hundred ninety seven dollars and eighty one cents, which is what you need to survive on a monthly basis. By the way, is two thousand seven hundred and two dollars and two cents. That's what you have left, which is why this debt should not have existed in the first, like, not in the first place. But uh, I, I mean, more like it should be paid off by now. So, first month, I want you to take that. I want you to put it in a high yield savings account. I use SoFi. I use whatever you want. That's what I use. Boom, you have a one month emergency fund. That's your first month. Now, that $700 that might need to go to a car repair, when that happens, use the $700 from this to pay for that car repair. And then whatever else goes towards that, I would follow the aggressive budget that I put down. Second month, we are, yeah, Sapphire will be fully paid off in the second month after the minimum monthly payment that's necessary in this most recent month. That actually gives you, that brings you now to an additional 3000 three thousand one hundred dollars you have left on a monthly basis so month number two you almost pay off the discover card or month number three you almost pay off the discover card month number four you take care of the pennies remaining on that and then you pay you put the additional let's call it three thousand dollars towards the apple card this is month number four and then month number five you kill the remainder of the Apple card. You have an additional $2,400 left. Cool. And then it will take an additional, after that, three more months to pay off. So what that brings us, let's be conservative, call it 10, to, 10 months to a year. 10 months to a year, and you have a one-month emergency fund, and all your debt is paid off. See, the thing is, if it does take one year, I only started my job in July. Yeah. So, like, I, you know, I wouldn't have paid it off as quick as I thought. How long were you without a job? A year. And I was freelancing, but I was earning anywhere from, like, 500 to 6,000 a month. It was, like, so in between. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Well, I mean, either way, we're we're, we're where we are now. So, I think this takes nine months to a year. Okay. Nine months to a year. And then from there, with the all the extra money you have left over, which will be a lot of money by then, uh, a lot of money left over. You have like three thousand six hundred dollars left over on a monthly basis, and without the necessities towards debt, yeah, we would do it. We'd do a ten thousand dollar emergency fund, and I think that would take you about three months to save up. Three months, so at max, maximum, maximum, this should take you a year and three months to pay off all your debt and have a six month emergency fund. And whatever you want to do from there is up to you. Whether you buy your own house. And, you know, you have your relationship the way you want to have your relationship as long as it's done in a healthy manner. I don't want anyone to be taken advantage of. And I'm not saying that's happening, but I want to make sure no one's ever taken advantage of. No one's ever being enabled for bad behavior. As long as that's not happening, do what you want to do. Um, Just mild codependence. All I would do, though, is make sure you're hitting a minimum. Tw- Let's play catch up. 25% in retirement on a monthly basis, starting in a maximum year and three months, maximum 
you are doing 20%, 25% on a monthly basis towards retirement. 401k, Roth IRA, all that good stuff. Yeah, I'm hoping to be more ambitious and maybe be faster than you anticipate. But we'll I think you could be. I think you could be fully done and have a fully funded emergency fund in a year. Should be max a year in three months, though. Uh, can I just ask, just wondering what okay. it would look like to aggressively invest, I guess, to try to start catching up on that lost compound? Uh, you mean once, once we have right, a fully funded right. emergency fund? What will, what will, what, what's aggressive to you? As best, like, I guess give me the route that's as aggressive as I can go and then the more realistic one. Well, I think 20% would be, okay, I'm doing 25% to catch up. Okay. Let's, uh, let's play a little math game. And this is without, this is, this is without your income being increased ever, which is not going to happen. Which, I mean, your income is going to be increased throughout your life. Mm -hmm. It should just do 8% return stock market. So S and P historically dividends reinvested is like 10.5, but either way, so we're investing for at that point, if you want to withdraw 59 and a half, Seven. Let's call it starting to 28. Okay. So 32 years. Additional 1,375 a month. We get you to two point about 2.5 million. Okay. Which and that's 25%, you said? Yep. Okay. 25% a month. Let's call that after inflation feeling like about eh, it could be about 1.3 million in today's money. So could you retire today in 1.3 million? I'm sure I could figure it out. I'm sure you could stretch it for a bit. I mean, it'll be, uh, I mean, that's, it, it depends. It depends the avenue you want to go. If you want to leave any money behind, if you don't, if you want to just use it till you're done, you know, there's a lot of different avenues. I think you could. Now it's better to obviously go into retirement with a paid for house, which if this is passed on, you will have that anyway. And I mean, you can continue, you can take the equity of this house and turn it into another paid for house. Uh, by selling that house and, you know, moving into a house that you want whenever that time comes. Either way, um, there could be, actually, there's really no reason in the situation, the family situation talked about why you should ever have a mortgage. Right. You could. I have nothing against mortgages, but I don't think you'll ever need to. So that would actually be more than enough. So 25% is fine. You can go aggressive. You can go, let, let's talk aggressive, yeah? yeah? Just out of just curiosity. It's fun to see how numbers play out. Mm -hmm. We could go for two point. We could go from 2.439 to, we're, we're adding, we're doing 30% towards okay. investments. I'll get you to about 3 million, which helps. I'll aim for 30% for sure. Brings you to 1.5 in today's money in terms of feel. So, yeah, ain't, your, your needs are so low right now. So low right now. So may as well just invest yeah. like crazy. Why not? And then if you need to lower your investing by 5 10% because your needs increase by 5 10% eventually, sure, that's fine. But this is what I would do. You've obviously gone down a hole. Mm -hmm. And it was actually a fun conversation. Lots of interesting topics to cover that we haven't talked about. And I love just talking about yeah. different things and just, you know, using real world examples that have been shown all throughout the history of human civilization. Um, For sure. I, it's honestly, very fun. Yeah, I didn't, I don't, I hate being perceived, so I didn't want to come on here just to be on camera, but I do think it was like a different perspective that wasn't on the show before. Yeah, it's cool. I really like it. Do you have any final thoughts? Any final questions? I'm just wondering, though, for my parents, I guess, you know, oh, their okay. perspective is super savings, like heavy, and they're closer to retirement age. Mm -hmm. What would you suggest for them, I guess? What are they do? at? Um, they have a paid for house. Do yes. they have paid for cars? They have a lot of cash to do stuff with do you know how much cash can you cut this off camera you want to talk about this off camera we can talk yeah, about yeah. it Let, yeah cool do you have any final thoughts for the episode though um no <laughs> okay sorry <laughs> um <laughs> thank you so much for having me and um i think you gave me the beating i needed to hopefully i wasn't super defensive i wasn't like, even that mean <laughs> you weren't I, I expected you to be tougher on me but um, I, I it's situation by situation i don't fake anything so but I uh, appreciate you hearing me out and helping out. For Wendy, that's actually a really interesting conversation. I love uh, all the variety of topics that we can talk about. And in general, they all come back to money, which is why it's okay to go off topic a little bit. And I do like that. Uh, even when I'm wrong or they're wrong, you know, just opens minds and opens my mind, opens their mind. It's always good. When it comes to Hammer Financial Score, spending a budget... No. We don't go to Mexico even for a friend's birthday when we're in bad debt. So two out of ten debt's not the worst debt we've ever had by any means. So it's gonna be a four out of ten, but certainly not good. 
Emergency fund, there's nothing there. Zero out of ten. Retirement, nothing there. Zero out of ten. Real estate, she's not on the title. She'll get the house eventually. We can change her score. But for now, it's zero out of ten. That's going to be a one out of ten for her hammer financial score. Don't forget to check out the resources linked in the description below. They're what I use or would use in a specific situation. If you want to be in an episode of Financial Audit and you're able to make it down to Austin, Texas, fill out the survey in the description below.